Fabulous, wonderful. So you you mentioned that Facebook and Instagram are working best for you in terms of ads. Uh, what's your ROAS, return on ad spend? I was working with an agency originally, and it my ROAS would never get above like a two two five, and I got rid of my agency last <laughs> like a year a year and a half ago, and started doing it all myself. Um, and now it ranges, it could go anywhere from like a 4.5 to an 8.9, depending on what the creative is and the time of the year. Um, so that's what the return is on the ad spend right now, um, which is, I'm happy with. <laughs> you must be because I have spoken to 100 plus CEOs of the US uh, e-commerce companies and you are perhaps one of the best. Uh, so give us a secret sauce, man. <laughs> I think it's, I mean, the clearest thing that I could say is I have a very specific niche um, and my customer, um, I think the key is really knowing who your customer is and speaking to your customer and speaking with authenticity. Um, if I'm talking about the AIDS Memorial or I'm talking about some graphic t-shirt I did that has this um, information, this historical piece of paper that was handed out at Gay Pride in 1990, there's a lot of really interesting history that I share on the site. Um, and I think that's, I mean, the real key is just being authentic and knowing who your customer is. I'm not trying to be a fashion brand. I'm not trying, I know the world needs another graphic t-shirt like they need a hole in the head. Mm -hmm. um, but there was a very specific political moment that we were surviving through as well as last year was the 50th anniversary of Stonewall. So that also brought a lot of attention to it. And then there are key things historically that I've been um, really strategic about my content and search terms and making sure on certain things that if you search for them, that I come up organic, Adam's Nest comes up organically at the top of the page. Um, and that's really been my, <laughs> my focus was really just being on the, having the niche. Um, I did accept Amazon pay for a while. And then I disconnected from Amazon. Um, when I worked for the small family owned apparel business, we did start selling on Amazon, but Amazon was taking 15% of the profit. And then you had to follow all of their requirements as far as customer service. And then they were getting my data. So when I was accepting Amazon pay, all of a sudden I was like, you know what? I don't need Amazon to know my data and know what my best seller is. And I got off Amazon. So I don't, I don't use any other marketplaces. Um, I do have a Facebook shop through Instagram, but I don't do checkout on Facebook because I'm not ready to live by their, cost, by their terms. Um, because, you know, whether it's free shipping or 30 day returns or whatever that is, like, I can't, nor do I want to. And I just feel my customer, the customer who shops with me, it's a different, they're buying into a different thing and they're not expecting that kind of customer service. I mean, I can, if I was on Amazon, I couldn't write a handwritten note to the customer, like the information isn't there to contact the customer. And that it's like this important touch that you have when you run a small business, I offer something that you can't get from someone else. I mm -hmm. offer customer service you're not going to get if you bought it through Amazon. When people contact me and I'm like, oh, I, you know, it's sale time. I'm sorry. I don't have this, but I have this. I mean, people are sort of shocked when a business responds to them promptly. And that in and of itself is a competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. My opinion. Definitely. So I think I think a lot of people agree with you here. Uh, so Adam is clearly saying that you got to connect with your people authentically with stories because you know at the end of the day, everybody is selling clothes or shoes or whatever. How is how is your story different? How are you able to connect with them authentically? is something which Adam is focusing on. He is not a big fan of Amazon, as you can see. When Amazon takes away 15% of revenue, not profit, right? 15% uh, of your revenue goes to uh, 
uh, Amazon and it's a big chunk. So unless you have huge margins uh, on the product, do not think of going, going to Amazon. Yeah, I mean, the other thing that happens with Amazon, I'm a business that a lot of, I would say, 50 to 60% of my product gives back to different charities. So if I'm giving back 10% or 25% or 10 bucks or five bucks and giving back another 15% to Amazon, it's like, there's no point. Yeah, right, absolutely. Then your entire business is charity. Yep. If, if, you bring in, if you bring in an Amazon element. <laughs> yeah, cool. Thank you so much, Adam, for setting the context. Uh, yep. Appreciate.